this is happening. <laughs> One of these days, I am going to blind some poor soul answering the door because I'm going to forget that I'm wearing it. I know this because I've blinded myself walking into the bathroom and seeing the reflection in the mirror. The main reason I got this thing was for painting the castle. Remember I was trying to decide how to paint the handle? You want to take a wild guess which one I chose? It's a rainbow! Of course it's a rainbow. I'm a little embarrassed to admit just how much time I spent painting the rainbow. Oh my goodness. It's a bunch of stripes, but they're tiny. And the colors have to be like where they are and not overly overlapping. It isn't just on the front. It's also on the back and inside twice. The OCD tendencies definitely came out to play. I've been using this little brush and if you think this looks silly because it's so tiny on such a big surface, you're right. But it does work better than a sponge brush. The sponge soaks up all the paint before the wood can get to it, whereas this I can just glob it on and then spread it out. It's coming along. I put a little keyhole. Da -da -da -da. The base coat is very nearly done. Pardon my neighbor's taste in face music. But just that little part. So you can see that's where I'm wearing the uh, lighted headdress. I'm not gonna lie. I kind of feel like MacGyver with a headlamp on. Ah, I don't know. It's kind of fun. So this has been my go-to project when I need to take a break from whatever my primary project is. When I finished the base coat, the rainbow was, was extra. I just couldn't resist. But when I finish the base coat of the boring gray and brown, I'm going to start adding stone arches around all the windows and the big drawbridge kind of door. I might add a chain. I don't know. Maybe I'll do that to mine, not the kid's version. And vines, you know, a little cat behind the stairs. All of that is totally still happening. But as previously mentioned, this isn't even my primary project. You're probably thinking, oh, right, because you're working on that rug. You remember the rug? I remember the rug. Well, it's at a complete and total halt. I know, I know, I know. It's been months. I think I started this thing in August, and August isn't that far away anymore. It may be a year before I finish the rug, and therefore the tutorial episode feature length film of ruggitude. It's, it, ugh. You wanna see it though? I'll show you. It's getting so big. Check it out. I'll stand back so maybe you can actually see it. This is a fun new angle, right? Ah! Look it! It's so big! I kind of think it would be fun to like make a coat out of it. It has this like uh, silliness to it. That's the rug. The primary project right now is a wedding dress. Look at this lace. Oh! The lace is the basis of the whole design. This incredible lace that she picked out. It still smells like the fabric store. Oh, it smells like heaven. I have a mannequin. It's not the right size yet, but I did make a paper mock-up. I laid out the lace, put paper over the top, and rubbed on it with a crayon. You know, did you ever do that in school? It works. I made a base on PVC pipe. For some reason, I didn't think it would be necessary to use that glue sealant. I'm gonna have to rebuild it. You can see she saw swaying in the breeze. Does anybody already know how to make a really good PVC base for a mannequin? Please let me know. Comment. That would be awesome. I would love to hear about it. I just don't want to put a pipe in a bucket of cat litter. I'm sure it would work. I just, I don't, I don't want to do cat litter. You see these hollyhock cones that just kind of fan out and create this amazing shape. I'm not sure if they're actually hollyhock flowers, but that's what I've been calling them from the beginning, so you're just stuck with that term now. Those two points are over the bust and wrap around to the back to this kind of loose, not really frilly, but like, so there's this gorgeous, irregular scallop. Ta-da! That's the scallop. It's so beautiful! They wrap around to the back and come together here. Now, this bit at the bottom, these are loose, and I am going to tack them so that they kind of ruffle up in here. Not really frilly, but like this 
will be stretch mesh the uh, scallop from the top we don't need all of it for the skirt so the scallop edge will go wrapped around and you can kind of see how it completes the back across into the front bodice which also has a thin sheer this is to give the illusion of the floating wide deep neckline the skirt itself will be pleated and doubled up so that those hollyhock points you know they're together this way on the front panel and then behind that is another one where they're offset so you get even more points but it allows the imagery of the lace to really come across whereas if you gather it all together it just kind of gets lost in a sea of random foliage the lace is just too incredible not to show off for what it is it's just amazing did i mention the stand is not very oh bugger so these buttons i uh thread it onto a regular old needle and then just kind of pick where i want it to be and boop placeholder. This will actually be an invisible zipper. The buttons will be decorative on top of that. Long sleeves will be cut to extend straight out. Stretch mesh will allow the shoulders to come down and keep everything taut. So this panel will be stretched because of that bit on the shoulders coming down when her arms are down, but it will still allow her to raise them a little higher than if they were cut at an angle. Mobility in a wedding dress to me is essential. I know I'm practically alone on that because it's a decorative dress, it's a pomp and circumstance kind of affair, but brides are people, they're just people. It's just one day, they're at a party, they need to have fun, and to have fun, I think you should be comfortable. You should be able to dance, sit down, bend over, pick something up, whatever. I have some paper gum tape to make a paper gum tape dress form. I don't know if you've seen this before, it took me a while to track it down. There are a few things out there that are similar but not actually paper gum tape. It has to be water activated. This one is also pH neutral, specifically says craft paper, like craft with a K, you know. There are plenty of tutorials out there. Feel free to look one of those up if you're curious. I'm sure I'll be showing you how I do mine as well. I'm really excited to get to this part. It does have a sweep train. The veil's gonna be even longer. So many, oh my goodness. I could go on and on and on and on. We should probably move on. All right, all right, we're moving on. We're moving on. There's more to show you. All right, so other things that have fallen in the cracks. You remember polymer clay and miniatures, like the tiny chair? I'm still making tiny things. The polymer clay I've been waiting on because I have had so much sewing out. The residue that clay leaves behind is not really compatible with sewing, and I really take my time cleaning that off my work surface before I bring fabrics and notions and materials up onto the table. I literally have this three by three table. Like this is my desk and the dining table and everything else. Someday I'll have a studio. That'll be pretty cool. There we get there when we get there. But anyway, I made this tiny chair. Then I made tiny brooms. I have a whole video of how I made these and there are a bunch of them. So lots to look forward to on that as soon as I Find time to edit them. Next week is looking good for that. Knock on wood. I also found this amazing little bronze thimble and the texture on it is great. If you have ideas of what you'd like to see this thimble turned into, let me know. I have kind of a couple of ideas, but um, if you want to like object and tell me that it's a vintage such and such and I'm just totally missing it, that's cool too. Just you know, leave a comment, let me know. I'd love to hear from you. I don't know. Fairies, miniatures, it's a symbol. Fairies use symbols for things, right? It's like a classic fairy interaction in cartoons, like a fairy and a symbol. There you go. I might just be thinking of Tinkerbell. I like Tinkerbell, she's pretty cool. On a semi-related topic of play and superfluous wonderful things in life, I started making a felt campfire set lots of footage of it to share with you to put out a video series of all the different parts and pieces but looking through it it's probably more of a documentary of my artistic process than a true tutorial i just went with it and it was kind of crazy and i couldn't stop so some of it is a little instructional most of it is just like oh cool so you get to see how i put this together it's super plush and total overkill for a child's toy as usual it's me
you know that by now. There are log with bark patterns, little end cap, rocks, which honestly, I think the rocks are my favorite. That one is definitely a tutorial of how I created these shapes because they are all different and there are eight of them and they're all just a little different shape. Roasting sticks, <laughs> hot dogs that you can totally put on a stick and roast in the fire and, and, where'd you go? Marshmallows. You can't have a campfire without marshmallows. It's just not loud. It's blasphemy. Of course, those fit on the sticks too. How cool is that? They're super plush. Plushy, plushy. I'm going to make graham crackers and chocolate and hot dog buns. And then the set will be complete. Haha! -ha! Believe it or not, I have so much more I could still show you right now. I can't stop making things. <laughs> like and subscribe and all that stuff. It does make a difference. This is Kira Naylor of Beam Me Up Lovely mm -hmm. signing off for something. Thank you so much for tuning in. Seriously, thank you. Making stuff, it's good. I'm rambling. I'm, I'm okay. I'm gonna go. You, just bye. Transcend the domestic tedium with handmade goodness. Mm-hmm.